Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I'll be explaining the Isomag meta, what they are, why they matter, when you should slot them over locators and exploiters, how to build around them, and of course how to go through and get them. As always, chapters are listed down below. The first thing I want to talk about is an explanation of what these Isomag consoles are. The full name of these is the Isomagnetic Plasma Distribution Manifolds, and it's much easier to just refer to them as Isomags. These are one of the four new advanced consoles that were introduced into the game in June of 2023. The Isomags are engineering consoles that will boost your weapon power and max weapon power cap by 7.25 each when you have them at Mark 15 Epic. The tooltip will show 7.3, but the actual number under the hood is 7.25. The bonuses from these consoles do stack, and you can stack the max power cap alongside abilities like override subsystem safeties. And what's nice about these advanced consoles is that they all have access to a wide range of modifiers, including plus damage mods like the phaser one you see at the right that you would traditionally see on attack console. And the reason that this matters is because with the introduction of the advanced consoles, the old fleet locator and exploiter consoles were classified as advanced and Cryptic put in a restriction that you can only have one profession of advanced consoles on a build at, the, at a time. So if you want to keep running the old locator and exploiter consoles, you can't run the new advanced engineering or advanced science consoles. Likewise, if you want to run these new advanced engineering isomag consoles, you can't run the advanced science or advanced tactical consoles. So there is some, some trade-offs there. But again, I'll remind you that as that picture on the past slide showed, you can still get modifiers like Phaser on these isomag consoles, and the same applies for the other advanced engineering and science consoles. So you're just giving up the crit chance or severity that those fleet tack consoles have, or whatever the other bonuses are on the other advanced consoles that you're wanting to slot. Now, I want to go through and take a look at what makes isomags even something worth considering over exploiters and locators. And to understand why isomags are good at all, we have to understand why weapon power matters on a build. And for weapon power, well, it is a multiplier that increases your energy weapon damage based on the power level at the time of firing. Still Better has a really nice breakdown on power mechanics if you want to learn more, including about weapon power overcap. Now to see just how hugely impactful that multiplier can be, let's take a look at the weapon power formula. The weapon power formula is your current weapon power plus 100 divided by 200. So if you are at the balanced preset and you have 50 weapon power, then your energy weapons are going to have a multiplier of 0.75. This is why a lot of new players struggle when they're first starting up in the game, why they have a lot of issues in combat. It's because their power levels are just too low. And I can demonstrate this by showing you the tooltip of this dual heavy cannon on my build. You see at 125 weapon power, it is at 3040 DPS. Now, if I go to the balanced preset, you can see immediately that that number is already dropping a pretty significant amount. And if I go down and make it so that my actual weapon power is 50, which is what a new player would experience, then you can see that the number is substantially smaller than what it, it was when I was at 125 weapon power. So we're talking about 3040 verse 2085. So pretty big difference there. And that is why you see most high-end builds for energy weapons immediately go in, hit the weapon preset. And in some cases you'll see people max out weapons and then dump the rest in engines or aux power because that is more ideal than the balanced preset. So if you have 100 weapon power, the multiplier is one. And if you're at 125, which is the default max weapon power cap, then that is a multiplier of 1.125. Now let's take a look at what the impact of isomags is. And as you can clearly see here, the more isomags that you can put on a build, the better this multiplier gets. So if you're able to slot four isomags on a ship, which most ships should be able to at this point, especially with T6X2, that multiplier goes from 1.125 up to 1.27 because you're at 154 weapon power. 
And if you are on a ship like the Inquiry, the the Connie 3, um, and many of the other America Worker cruisers out there, you could potentially slot eight of these isomags. And when you're able to slot eight of them, that's 183 power that you could potentially have for your weapons. And that is a do multiplier of 1.415. That's a pretty big jump over the the 1.125 that you would have with the the prior 125 weapon power cap. So that is why you see Isomax getting any attention at all, because that weapon power can be hugely impactful. And for those of you on torpedo or mine focused builds, Isomags do basically nothing for you. Yes, you can still get the torpedo modifiers on Isomags and those would still boost you but the actual weapon power does literally nothing for torpedoes and mines. Rather, torpedo builds generally tend to focus on aux power so that they can take advantage of consoles like the phase space membrane. Weapon power does nothing for those builds, and isomags just don't make any sense for a torpedo or mine focus build. You're better off with the traditional locators or exploiters if that is the type of build you're focusing on. And now is the fun part of the video, the thing that many of you have been waiting for. How exactly do isomags stack up against locators and exploiters? So, as I said before, you can get mods like Phaser, Disruptor, Plasma on any of the advanced consoles, including the isomags, and that buff is going to be the exact same as the Phaser mod that you could get on a TAC console, as you can see with the, the pictures there. The question really is, is whether the plus 7.25 current and max weapon power is able to do more for you than 2% crit chance or 9.8% crit severity. And for that, we need to look at some math. And for the math here, I'm going to be using tools from STO Better to help me figure things out. I'll be simming out a beginner build a mid-range surgical strikes build, a high-end surgical strikes build, and then a high-end min-max level CSV build. I think the results are going to be pretty clear throughout all of the, the math here, and this will carry over to beam overload builds, fire at will, whatever energy weapon focused build that you're using. Now, I do want to note that I am not a math whiz, so if you want some additional math and second opinions before you go in and invest on isomags on your build, then I'll have a link to Stow Better's breakdown on isomags in the description down below. The first build that I'll be simulating here today is going to be beginner focused. I've taken a copy of the Baby Steps Part 1 build by Neuro1G and slightly modified it. This is a build that has 10% crit chance, 105% severity, and very little Cat 1 and Cat 2. So very beginner level. Most of you have builds that far exceed what this one would be capable of. But I want to see what the impact would be from adding Epic, Mark 15, Locators, Exploiters, and Isomags to the build, so that we can get an idea of what type of impact each has at a low level. Here is the raw data. You can pause if you want to look at this closer, but you can see the impact of 1 through 8 Locators on a build, 1 through 8 Exploiters, and 1 through 8 Isomags. And as you can see, even on a build with basically no crit chance and severity, the isomags are pulling ahead of locators and exploiters. And what I found really interesting is that isomags get quite close to locators and exploiters with one less console slotted, and even are able in some cases to beat locators and exploiters with one less console on the build. So you can see here that once you get up to about four isomags on the ship, you're able to beat out what five exploiters would give you for a damage boost. And it's it's a little bit behind what locators would do, but once you keep slotting isomags on, you see here that when you get to six isomags, that that is a larger buff than what seven locators would give you. So that that's an interesting bit there too, is that you're able to get the same damage buff, but with less console slotted. So I think the question is going to be, does that carry over to more high-end builds? The next build that I want to take a look at is going to be a bit more mid to upper range. This is something that I would expect many of you would probably be able to put together within half a year to a year of playing the game. And this is a mid-range Surgical Strikes build. Surgical Strikes is something many of you have requested I cover more because it performs really good. It actually performs better than Beam Overload for a single target, 
The extension trait for it is available via account-wide unlock via the legendary Gemadar attack ship, and Surgical Strikes 3 has some really good buffs on it. It gives you plus 30% crit chance, plus 80% severity, plus 30 ac. It's just a really good firing mode, especially for single target. The, the takeaways of the, the testing that I did here is that, for those of you wondering if you should put exploiters on over locators, it seems that even at 80% crit chance, that's not high enough to warrant you using exploiters over locators. But regardless, the isomags in this case have about a 12.5% lead over exploiters and locators when you can slot the same number of them. And in situations where you can only slot like five isomags versus six exploiters or locators, I think as the, the previous math has shown, you're probably still going to be better off with the isomags. Now let's take a look at a more high-end Surgical Strikes build. And for this one, I did basically just Exploiter versus Isomag, because once you get to a really high high-end environment with Surgical Strikes, your crit chance is capped at 100%. You don't get anything from going over 100% crit chance, so running locators does nothing for you. And you can see here the values of running four to seven uh, exploiters versus four to seven isomags. And the results are pretty comparable to what I've shown in the prior uh, results so far. You can see here that by slotting one less isomag than an exploiter, that the isomag still generally wins out. And in this case, four isomags is beating five exploiters. Five isomags is beating six. Six isomags beats seven. It, in fact, five isomags is actually beating seven exploiters in, in this simulation here. So you, you can see that isomags with a really high-end build are also performing better than the locators and exploiters. And I did go through and just recheck this data with the, the Trinity tool from Stow Better. I input a Surgical Strikes build into it. And even there, you can see that the, the isomags, you can see that five isomags, very close to seven exploiters, and seven isomags just clearly is far ahead of what seven exploiters could bring you. So for those of you on a Surgical Strikes build, isomags definitely seem like the way to go. And for the final simulation here, I'm looking at a very high-end min-max level energy weapon build. Here's the raw data if you want to pause and look at it closer. Um, this is based on my inquiry from a video I did about a year and a half ago. And this is it simulated with one through eight locators, exploiters, and isomags. Here is the summary of that data. And you can see that the trends from before do continue. Isomags beat out exploiters and locators whenever you can slot as many of them as you could, locators or exploiters. And when I get up to about three isomags on the build, that is actually able to not just match, but it's also able to beat four locators or exploiters. And on this specific build, this, this is a build very high-end energy weapons to clarify, but six isomags are beating out what eight locators or eight exploiters could do. So on a very high-end build for energy weapons, isomags are clearly the way that you want to go. And you can see here that when I sim out eight isomags versus eight exploiters or, lo or locators, you know, that's, that's a 17% gain in this simulation. And when I looked at uh, Trinity, I was specifically looking at how I would build out my inquiry, which can slot up to eight of the isomags, but it can only slot up to like six of the exploiters or locators because you would still want to have the, the Lorca attack console on. So in that simulation, you know, the, the eight isomags are very, very easily beating the six locators and exploiters. And for many of you, you're going to be in the same situation where you don't have the option anyways on your ship to slot as many locators or exploiters as you could these isomags. So to summarize all of the math here, like I've said, isomags are 
able to easily beat locators or exploiters when you can slot the same number of them, regardless if on a beginner or min-max energy weapon build. And even in situations where ice mags have a 1-2 to two slot deficit versus the attack consoles, they are quite often matching or beating the attack consoles in the various sims that I've just shown you. So isomags, from a math point of view and from the performance I've seen in-game, they are pretty good and a nice upgrade over locators and exploiters. And to recap, when should you use isomags? Well, you should first make sure that your build actually needs weapon power. Like I said before, torpedoes and mines do not benefit from weapon power, and isomags would be pointless on a torpedo or mine-focused build. However, if you are on a build that does benefit from weapon power, then you would want to compare how many isomags you could slot on the ship versus locators or exploiters. And you should also keep in mind when comparing the number of engineering versus tax slots that one to two or maybe more of your tax slots are going to be occupied by various set and mission tax consoles like the Lorca, the Fekiri Torment Engine, the Morphogenic. You know, if you're using those things, you would want to subtract those slots for the comparison below. So if you have the same number of engineering console slots as tactical or more, engineering slots, then you'd go isomag. If you have one less engineering slot for stack, I'd lean isomag. If you have two less engineering slots for stack, you may want to use the Trinity tool to calculate your exact situation, but you should be fine going either way. And if you have three less engineering slots than tack, then I would stick with locators and exploiters. And next up, I want to show you how to build around isomags. So you basically have to treat isomags like tack consoles that go in engineering slots. So all of your engineering and universal console slots are pretty much just going to be isomags. There are some engineering consoles that you may want to slot over an isomag. Like if you're on a phaser build, you may want to do the reinforced armaments console for the two piece with the Omni or turret. That two piece haste buff is pretty nice. But when I did sim that out in Trinity, it looked like the isomag was still better. So it's up to you, but that is an option that you'll have. And for your universal consoles, you're basically just putting those in your Psy and TAC console slots. If you want to get more damage, you could also use your TAC console slots for the Fleet Colony TAC consoles. Those were not classified as advanced and can be used alongside the, uh, the isomags. Um, those Fleet Colony attack consoles still give you the same damage buff, it's just that they have a heal effect on them rather than the, the crit chance or severity that the other Fleet consoles had. And there's also the Disco Rep Bellum consoles, which you can get from the Discovery Reputation Store. Those are a smaller damage buff, but those do have a crit chance buff associated on them. So I want to go in and give a demonstration in game quick of converting a build from exploiters or locators over to isomags. So on my Delkina, I used to run it as an exploiter setup before the isomags were released. And part of the reason I swapped over to isomags on this setup is because I do have more tack consoles, but two of those tack consoles are being eaten up by mission and set of tack consoles here. So even though I had seven tack consoles, only five of them were actually the locators or exploiters. And with this ship having four engineering slots plus two universal, that means that I could run six isomags versus five exploiters, which that math has clearly shown is a much better option. So the, what, the way to go through and convert this would be to take all of your locators or exploiters off your build. So take them all off. Then you're going to move your universal consoles down to your tax slots, or you may have to remove some of them. So in this case, I don't have room to move these four engineering, uh, the four universals I have in the engineering slots into these three tax slots here. So I would either have to drop one of the tax consoles or drop one of these universals. So in this case, for this demonstration, I'm just going to drop one of the universals. And that is a decision you'll have to make as to which which one you want to drop. And then I'm going to put the isomags on.
So I'm just going to put those on and that that is basically it. Like that is what you have to do to convert a ship from locators or exploiters over to isomags. It's going to be painful. You're probably going to have to find a universal console or two that you have to drop. But I think you'll find that the the performance improvement will be very nice in the end. And in this case on the Stalkina, which is a build I'll be showing here um, in the next week, hopefully, you can see 169 over 100 for the weapon power just sitting here. And that stacks with OSS, like I said before. So briefly over 200 weapon power. It's really crazy. And like I've said, it's hugely impactful for the energy weapon performance. And the last topic for today is how to get these isomag consoles. So there's two different routes. You can buy them directly off the player exchange. They are listed under the engineering console category. And the other route is to craft them. So if you're looking to just buy these things, then you would want to go to the engineering console category, like I said, and type in isomag. And you'll see that they tend to start about 30 to 40 million EC is where these things start off price wise. Now, there's a lot of different ones here and there's a lot of modifiers. So if you're looking to get a specific one, like if you want to just get the phaser one, then you can just search for that phaser modifier. Now, make sure when you're going to buy this that you have fully spelled out the damage type you're going for, because in some cases, like for phaser, there's also a PHA modifier that is phaser resistance. That would not be very beneficial for you. You want the one that is the plus phaser damage, not the plus phaser damage resistance. So make sure that what you're buying is the correct thing. And also make sure that you're buying the right console because there are other advanced engineering consoles, which I have not talked about today, like this hanger pet one here that does have quite a few listings. So make sure that you're actually getting the correct one if you're trying to buy the isomag phaser console. And as for crafting the isomags, there's three different ways that you can get the components to craft them. You can buy them off the exchange. Simply search isomag under all and you will see the fragments and the cores listed. You can open promotional R&D packs and have a chance to get the isomag crafting components from them. And if you open Elite Q R&D Plectin and Radiogenic Particle Boxes, you'll have a 50% chance to drop one isomag fragment. And you can get these Elite Q boxes by playing the Elite versions of the TFOs listed here on screen. My recommendation would be Into the Hive and Minor Instability Elite. Those are ground TFOs, but ground elites are very, very easy to get into. And those do pop a bit more than these other Qs. You can also get these Elite Q boxes right off the exchange. Sometimes they'll be less than half the cost of what the fragments are selling for. So that may be an option to consider. And if you're someone that has a ton of research assignments, if you get a critical on a research assignment and it gives you an Elite Q R&D box for Plectin or Radiogenic, those boxes would have the chance to drop an isomag fragment also. And for those of you crafting isomags, the process is as follows. Take five of the isomagnetic plasma pieces to the special projects tab in the R&D window and convert them to a core. Take that core to the engineering R&D tab, select advanced console, then isomag, and craft it at Mark II. There is no need to craft the console above Mark II. It is much cheaper to upgrade from Mark II rather than trying to craft the console at Mark 12. So just craft it at Mark II. That will also give you a cheaper route to potentially make the console go to Epic. So I'm going to demonstrate this real quick. So I have some isomagnetic plasma pieces courtesy of Dark Ghost, and I am going to go to special projects here and convert those to, to the, the cores. I'm just going to instantly complete that here. Then I'm going to go to the engineering tab. Advanced engineering consoles is the fourth one here. I'm going to select isomagnetic, leave it at Mark II. And you can apply Catalyst if you want. You'll need a Maintenance Engineer Duty Officer here, as you see. And then you can just go through and craft the consoles. Okay, so I have a Tricobalt one here. 
I'm going to grab this. Now, if you wanted to go through and upgrade this, the way to try and get it up to like ultra rare or epic very cheap would be to use a superior engineering experimental tech upgrade and a major research boost. Apply that upgrade and hopefully you'll get an ultra rare and or epic upgrade along the way. Doesn't always happen, but sometimes you get lucky. In this case, I got the ultra rare upgrade, but not the epic. And for the rest of the way, I would just use the the uh, Phoenix upgrades and then just spam it. You see, it's not really that expensive to go from Mark II to Mark 15 on a console. If you can get it to Epic cheap along the way, you know, that that's nice, but it doesn't always happen. Now, let's take a look at the RNG of crafting. One of the biggest issues you're going to have when crafting these things is that the mod pool is quite extensive. There's around 40 options. Independence 1776 here did go through and send me some data. They crafted 155 on a level 20 R&D character with no catalyst. 75 of them went very rare, 81 ultra rare, and you can see the results they had there. So it's it's uh, unlikely that if you're trying to get phaser that you're going to immediately be able to craft one as phaser, but thankfully they can be re-engineered, but as you can see here, the, the mod list is quite extensive. And that means that re-engineering is also quite expensive because you've got like 40 different possible mods, so it can take quite a bit to get a console to go to the modifier that you're wanting. Rather, what I would recommend is that you have a pool of modifiers that you would be fine getting on the console. So, you know, let's say you want phaser but you're re-engineering it and you end up getting a disruptor modifier on that. Take that, sell the console. Just go sell the console on the market or try to find someone who would trade a phaser one for it. That would probably be the, the best solution because if you try to just keep re-engineering the console to one specific mod, it may be quite expensive. So I'm gonna demonstrate this here by re-engineering that right, cobalt one that I just got. And make sure to protect these things too, because they can be salvaged, especially given the cost. You would not be happy if you salvaged one of these things. So you can see the, the list of possible mods is, it's a lot. And for me, if I get any of the plus damage mods for, for energy weapons, I'm like that, that's good enough for me. That That's not like a cannons or beams, like a specific. So I got AP there after a couple of rolls, and at that point I could just take that AP console, go to the exchange, and let's see here. There's only one up at 65. You could search for the modifier to make sure that the price isn't too crazy. So yeah, I could probably just sell that for like 50 to 60 mil and use the, the EC from that to help get whatever console I was actually wanting. So. That is an option and something that you may want to consider rather than trying to re-roll it endlessly to, to try and get like phaser. And to summarize everything I've talked about in this video, I would recommend thinking of isomags as tack consoles that go into engineering console slots. Isomags have made ships that are very engineering heavy, very competitive against tack heavy ships. You can now make one of those cruisers that has five engineering slots perform very, very well compared to ships that have five TAC consoles. Getting a full isomag set is going to be expensive time or money wise, and some of you may want to stick to locators or exploiters for simplicity. And at the end of the day, you know, a lot of the math did show that isomags are ahead, especially when you can slot as many of them as locators or exploiters on a build, but exploiters and locators are still perfectly viable. You know, those consoles are still as good today as they were before isomags were introduced into the game. Yes, isomags, you know, may be a few percent better, but if you've spent a lot of resources on those exploiters or locators, they still work. And there are still some cases where they are better. And the, for some of you, you know, they're still going to, to be the thing that you want to slot. Like if you have a build that has lots of non-energy weapon things on it, like you have some torpedoes on the build also, or you're trying to also boost up some bridge officer or console abilities, the exploiters and locators giving that crit chance and severity 
those are going to help those things more than the isomags could. So there's still reasons to use locators and exploiters. You don't have to throw them away. Rather, this is just creating a nice alternative that gives us another route to build ships, and it lets some ships that were less desirable before become a lot more competitive in the current state of the game. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below. But that's going to be it for today. Again, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. You guys around.